I'm Paul Bailey. Today we're going to talk about routers, modems, and internet service providers. What is a router? A router connects your home or your business to the internet, to the world, and they protect your information from security threats. And they do a lot more advanced things. And if you want to know more about the advanced parts of it, please let me know and we'll get into VPNs, which are virtual private networks and internet protocols and those kinds of things. But for right now, let's stay with the simple basics. And I will admit that this particular presentation has been simplified and it does not have all of the information that you might want. But I hopefully it will give you enough information to understand the basics of routers, modems, and internet service providers. In the old days of computing, we used to connect our computers to the internet via a telephone line. We would plug in, we, our modem would eventually make a boops and beeps all over the place, and then our con computer would eventually connect to the internet, and it was very slow. In those days, everything on the internet was pretty much text. Very few pictures, the pictures that were there were not very good, and there were almost no videos. Today, we use much more digital connections. However, we still use the term modem, which means to modulate and demodulate. The MO in modem stands for modulate a signal from analog to digital, and demodulate means to send it back from digital to analog, to be able to cross a telephone line, for example. That's what a modem is. The difference between a modem and a router is that a modem connects to the internet while a router connects to different devices on Wi-Fi in your home. It's easy to get the two devices mixed up because a lot of internet service providers nowadays sell you or rent you one device that does both jobs and they're connected together in one box, not two anymore. While separate routers can be powerful and configurable and feature filled, it isn't necessarily a good thing for everybody. <clears throat> Whether you get a separate router or not depends on the trade offs that you're willing to make. So, ISPs or internet service providers have combined modem and router units to make things simpler. The internet service provider can hand their customer a box that handles everything that they need. Sharing the internet connection between multiple devices, computers just don't have, don't have to buy their own, customers don't have to buy their own router or hook it up. They don't have to understand all the technical terms. All they have to do is plug it in, and you've heard the term plug and play. And that's what we're trying to get to in the terms of internet today. Having a combined mo modem and router makes sense because there's no reason to really split the technology or the functionality into two separate boxes anymore. So how could you use your own router if you wanted to? Well, in many cases, you can use your own router. However, in some cases, it's not advisable. And in some cases, your internet service provider may have a problem with you using your own router. On many of the combined units, you can disable the router functionality and then allow your signal to pass through the modem now because you've disabled the router capability into the next device in line which would of course be your particular router. This would work primarily uh, for cable uh, routers. Uh, it would not necessarily work for some things. Uh, You can, excuse me a moment, please. The main advantage of bringing your own router is getting additional hardware and features that your ISP router doesn't provide. For example, let's say you really want the fastest possible connection. 802.11ac, for example. Wi-Fi and your, and your combined router motor doesn't provide that to you. <clears throat> you can purchase your own wireless router with the feature and connect it to your modem via Ethernet. It will provide you with faster Wi-Fi over a fixed Ethernet line with your modem. 
You may also want to add additional features for your modem. In short, if you want to get technical, it's time to add a separate router to your, your system, your internet Wi-Fi system. If you're not interested in getting technical, you might be better off to call your internet service provider and get an updated uh, router or modem for your particular use. They will, of course, charge you for this or rent you a new one or whatever the case may be. Um, there will be a fee involved, I'm sure. So what is an internet service provider anyhow? Well, an internet service provider is a company that allows access to the internet via one of several different methodologies. These methods include the old dial-up that we talked about a little bit earlier, where the computer literally dials a number and connects to the internet using a telephone line. Next came DSL, which stands for Digital Subscriber Line. A DSL modem lets your con computer connect to the internet at much higher speeds than were ever possible with dial-up. Next came broadband wireless, and which is a telecommunications technology that provides high-speed wireless internet access and computer networking over a wide area. The term comprises both fixed and mobile broadband. And finally, we have cable modems, which is a satellite modem, a type of network bridge that provides bi-directional data communication via radio frequency channels on a hybrid fiber coaxial radio frequency over glass, and coaxial cable infrastructure. If I just lost you, just ask questions. Last but not least, let's talk about satellite internet because that is an upcoming thing and has been done many, many times. Satellite internet requires three individual satellite dishes. One at the internet service provider's hub, one in space, and one attached to your individual property. In addition to the satellite dish, you may also need a modem and cables running to and from the dish to your modem. Once you have everything connected, the ISP will send the internet can signal to the dish in space, which then relays it to you at your home. Every time you make a request for a new page or send an email or download anything, your internet service provider is literally sending the, your request into space and back to their computer and their dish and then back to your dish. That's how it works. So what internet service providers are available here in Lake Havasu City? Well, there are a number of them, but let me talk about kind of what I call the big three. The three that I consider to be um, the most popular, perhaps. They're not maybe the best, maybe they are the best, it depends on your point of view. I'm not trying to sell or not sell any particular one of them. I'm just trying to inform you of what is available out there. First of call is, of course, is Suddenlink. Uh, at suddenlink.com, you can find out more information about them. They use a cable modem router, and uh, there are a number of cable modems that are available that you could use with them. And I will post to this video a list of the cable modem routers that are uh, workable with Suddenlink, so that should you decide to go get your own uh, router, you'll know which ones will work. Next, let's talk about wire-free communications. They provide a Wi-Fi router as well, but I use my own uh, internet uh, router, which is a TP-Link Archer C9. You can look on the internet if you're interested in learning more about that particular router. I have a lot of different devices in my home that are connected to the internet via that router, and it works perfectly with wire-free communications. I'm not trying to sell or unsell wire-free, it just works very well for me. I'm not associated with, sponsored by them, it doesn't make a dime worth the difference to me whether you uh, go with them or don't, but I'm telling you from my point of view, they are one of the best internet service providers here in Lake Havasu City. Last but not least, let's talk about Frontier Internet. A Frontier Internet either provides DSL or in some cases, fiber optic technology called FIOS, F-I-O-S, for their internet connectivity. If you can get FIOS, it's fast and it's pretty good. It's a little bit expensive too, but it is very fast. It carries data and delivers bandwidth over long distances. It's more dependable than coaxial cables. And 
it's a wide open four lane highway compared to a two lane highway that you would get in some other ways if you'd like to think of a car analogy. However, Fios is not available in everywhere uh, within uh, Frontier's area. So you'll want to contact them to find out for sure if your particular area has Fios or whether it's just DSL line. DSL is not particularly fast, but it's up to you. You know, there's different speed types of things, different things. People need different things depending on how much you use the internet, how often you're on it. I do a lot of streaming of uh, video and that kind of thing. So for me, it's very important to have high speed internet, but maybe that isn't important for you. There are other internet service providers, I am sure, around the Lake Havasu area that I didn't mention. I didn't mention them because I don't know about them and I don't really use them. The three that I mentioned are the ones that I consider kind of the big three in the area. And if you find another one that you like, please feel free to leave me a message and tell me all about it. This is Paul Bailey. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of information regarding your cable, internet, modem, and router. Have a great day. Bye-bye.